Philippians chapter 1, and this is a writing of Paul. He says in verse 1 of chapter 1, Paul and Timothy, the servants of Jesus Christ, to all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons, grace be to you, peace from God our Father, from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for all, for you all making requests with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day till now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to thank this of you all, because I have you in my heart, insomuch as both in my bonds and in the defense of the confirmation of the gospel, ye are partakers of my grace." You can read your, uh, I, I, I thought I had that on, okay? They said I didn't have it on. Good, I didn't get all that crazy stuff. Okay, it was already on then, okay? You got it now? All righty. I don't like these things anyway, amen? But anyway, here in the book of Philippians, Paul uh, is writing to the Philippian church. And uh, he is giving, actually giving words of encouragement uh, to the Philippian church. And uh, here, the, Philippian, the, the book of Philippians is a book of joy. Several times the word joy is mentioned in the Word of God. He talks about having joy. He talks about the need of joy and the effects of joy all in the book of Philippians. And in fact, the main verse in this whole book is in chapter number 1, verse 21, when Paul says, For me to live is Christ and die is gain. And that's the, the, the main verse. And everything is centered around that. You want to have joy, number one, you've got to have the Christ. If you're going to have joy, number two, you've got to live for Christ. Amen. And so, uh, and look for Christ. That brings joy in our heart also. And uh, here, here in this chapter one, uh, it, it's, it just has a reference. If you have a Schofield Bible, it has a reference uh, to rejoicing in spite of our suffering. And how, in no matter how much we suffer, we can joy, rejoice. In fact, Paul was in prison, and he's rejoicing. Uh, in Christ, and in uh, chapter new, 2, it's a pattern uh, for uh, us to rejoice in our service, in our lowly service that we have for God. Right. You know, just count it a blessing that you get to serve the Lord, amen? amen. Some people say it's real high. I tell you, it's just an humbling thing that we even get to serve the Lord. And then you come to uh, chapter 3, and it deals, my friend, with uh, the rejoicing in spite of imperfection. You know, we're not perfect. But thank God God looks past our, our, our failures and our faults and our imperfections and let us live for Him anyway. Amen. And then you come chapter number uh, 4, and it deals with rejoicing over anxiety in our hearts and in our life. And so Philippians is a wonderful book, and you ought to study it sometimes just in the reference of joy. Now, when Paul wrote this book, he's in prison. Paul is in prison when he wrote this book. He wrote several books in prison, Colossians and, and different ones, Philemon. He wrote all them books while he was in prison. I got to thinking about that. Most of us was in prison today. We wouldn't be wanting to write no books, amen. We'd be wanting to call somebody, the Christian Law Association, or Brother Doug to raise some money and get us out, amen. And we'd be griping and groaning. But Mr. Pitcher, Paul's in prison. Paul is in prison, and when we think about prison, we're not talking about the jail they go to today. We're talking about it most of the time as a dungeon. And uh, most of the time it was just a hollowed out place in, a, in the ground. And they made a dungeon out of it. In fact, if you go over, it talks about in the book of Acts that Paul and them was in the inner prison. And if you go to the inner prison, it was in the midst of the uh, prison. So I mean, the prisoners all around, but they had a hole dug in the midst, in the inner part of the prison, and Paul was sitting there in Paul and Silas in the inner part of that prison, kind of in a hole in a dungeon, and bound. And here in this chapter, he's bound. He's got stalks in his feet, got them in his hand. I run reference on it. It said sometimes they would allow my friend Paul to let the, the, the shackles come off of his hands and so he could write. And so Paul is in prison when he writes this book, and he's uh, writing and encouraging the church. The church here is going through a hard time. The Philippians church is in a hard time. That's not as hard as the Corinthian church was. Corinthian church, when he wrote to them, there wasn't no joy in that writing when he wrote to the Corinthian church. But here, Paul is writing to these faithful people here at the Philippian church. 
and the Philippian church, the, the things around the church. And, and uh, uh, the, as he preached, talked this morning, uh, the forces of evil was uh, coming up against the Philippian church, and hardships and difficulty was there. You have to say that the church today is in hard times. Amen. We are in difficult situation. In fact, you just have to believe the demons of hell don't like the church. The devil don't like the church. The world don't like the church. Politicians don't like the church. Ain't it amazing every time they run on election, they won't call it, get on Christianity stuff, and they could care less. Amen. And, and, uh, and our government, as he brought it out, and if it's just too hard, blame him. He got it, brought it out. Amen. But the government today, you think as far as no, there's never, we've never went through as a church, and I've been saved for 64 years, we've never went through the, what the church is going through now. We've never went through that before. There's never been such an attack on the church as it has been before. I, I've never seen the weakness among what so-called Christians are, my friend, in the church today. The government just hollered this, and everybody just took off. And, and I, I told him in a meeting the other day, I said, when they hollered COVID, all the church Christians, all the Christians, run out of the church. And somebody said, where'd they go? I said, they went to Lowe's. Amen. Uh, uh, my friend, but listen, it seemed like people scattered. Uh, and it seemed like we've not gained back from that. Uh, a lot of churches we go to, the pastor says, our folks has not come back. Uh, and we're still struggling, uh, my friend. And, and uh, our, our services, uh, a lot of churches are still just having one service a week. Uh, and so there's a lot of pressure on the church. Uh, and Paul is in prison. And my friend, and his mind is still on the church there at Philippi. And he gives some words of encouragement to this church. And I'm going to say, my friend, if anything we need uh, as church members, we need encouragement one for another. If anything your pastor needs, it's encouragement. Amen. He's saying, my friend, the workers of this church and the ones that stands behind here, they need encouragement one for another. I hear a lot of people, my friend, criticizing the church. I hear a lot of church folks, my friend, criticizing the church. Some people's left the church, left an old-fashioned church like this, went to another church. Uh, my friend, where well, there's uh, not so many convictions and not so much strongness. Uh, and so there's a whole different transition in the church today. Uh, but I, I want to give you some words of encouragement from the Apostle Paul. Now remember, he's in jail. He's in jail. First of all, I thought about the person that's giving us encouragement. It's Paul himself. I'm talking about the one in the, book, in the book of Acts chapter number 9. You know what Paul was doing? He was persecuting the church. Amen. In fact, uh, when Paul got right with the Lord, you know what he was doing? He had letters in his hand going down to get permission, my friend, to persecute more Christians. Uh, throw Christians in jail and, and have uh, Christians killed uh, because of their faith. And now Paul in Acts chapter 9 gets born again, and now he's turned from being against the church to being for the church. I like what Brother Ronnie said this morning. If you get saved, really get born again, you're going to love the church. There'll be a change in the attitude and a change in your mind toward the church. Amen. I don't know about you, I love the church. The reason I love the church is because Christ loved the church. And Christ gave himself for the church. And God and Christ, if he does anything, he's going to work through the church. And guess what? He's coming back for the church. And I believe in the local church. You think I don't want to run from is the local church. And so Paul is in prison. And my friend, he's went through so much. Let me read this right quick. And I'm going to give you just three or four things. But in 2 Corinthians, listen to what Paul said. He said, as ministers of Christ, I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in presence more frequent, in death often. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes save one. Thrice were thy beaten with rods, once thou was stoned. Thrice thou suffered shipwreck. Night and a day in the deep, I, uh, night and a day I've been in the deep. In journeys often, in pearls of water, in pearls of robbers, in pearls of my own countrymen, in pearls of the heathen, in pearls of the city, in the wilderness, in the sea, among folks, brethren, in weariness, in and watchings often in hunger and thirsting and fasting and cold and nakedness besides all those things that are without that which come upon me daily the care of all the churches I tell you what they ain't one of us been through none of that stuff amen, amen. and none of us ever been in jail for the cause of Christ 
Ain't none of us ever suffered a night and a day and a day. In fact, ain't none of us ever been beat for the cause of Christ. Amen. But in the midst of all this beating, in the midst of all this jail experience, in the midst of all this opposition, and my friend Paul sits down in prison and writes encouraging words to the church at Philippi. Amen. I'll tell you what, I don't care what you went through. You are to come in these doors, my friend, with encouragement one for another. And you are to come with encouragement, my friend, for the pastor and the man of God and the work of God. My friend, we need encouragement these days. Don't you get tired of everybody being critical. <laughs> Amen. And I tell you, so let me give it to you right quick. I thought about the, pers the, the person, then I thought about the people that's receiving this, uh, this encouragement. It was the church at Philippi. Look in verse number one. Paul and Timothy, the servant of Jesus Christ, listen, to all the saints in Christ Jesus who were at Philippi with the bishops and deacons. He's writing this letter, not just to encourage the pastor, not just to encourage the deacons, but all the church, all the saints, every member of the church. He's writing this to encourage them. I know the pastor needs encouragement, and I know man, the deacons need encouragement, but I'm going to tell you what, everybody in this building needs encouragement. Amen. The young folks need encouragement. The middle aged needs encouragement. That's the old people need encouragement. Those that sing needs encouragement. Those that don't sing that just sit here, we all need encouragement. And Paul is writing this to the church at Philippi to everyone. And you know what? Everybody in the church today needs encouragement. Amen. Not just your clique. <laughs> Not just your special friends, but every one of us needs encouragement. Amen. Then I thought about uh, the, the place of encouragement, and I touched on this. But the place of encouragement that these words came from, it came from prison. <laughs> I mean, he's in a hard place, but he's still giving encouragement. Amen. Sometimes, you know, I think we're called to come in here. I don't care what we're going through. We're going to come in here with encouraging words and forget what we're going through. I got a pastor, me and him, we communicate uh, with text. And, and in fact, I'll preach for him in a couple of weeks, but we, we communicate with text all the time. And, and every Wednesday, I send him a text, and he answers back. And every Sunday or Saturday, I send a text, and he, invite, he, he uh, uh, answers me back. And I try to send encouragement words. And every time you talk to him, I say, how you doing? <laughs> he seemed too blessed to complain. Amen. Too blessed to complain. Uh, and you know what? We're really too blessed to complain. Uh, and we need encouragement in these days. Uh, my friend, to keep on going for God. As he taught in Sunday school how easy it is for us to get off track. How easy it is for the devil to get us bitter. How easy is the devil is to get us discouraged. Uh, my friend, we need encouragement one for another. Uh, and then uh, I thought about the church today was facing hard things. Uh, in fact, it talks about the last days. We are in the last days. There's no last, in the last days, perilous times shall come, troublesome kind. Men shall be lovers, own self, covenants, bozer, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, power, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, have a form of God, denying the power thereof. We're living in these days. When people don't want preaching, they want you to tell some fable or some tale, and they don't want preaching. We're in those days, uh, my friend. And it, 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 it's a sad thing is, used to, my friend, if you left this church and went down to the next church, they preached the same thing. Now you can just go down to any church, what you want to do, what you want to do, you can go and find it, they'll let you do it. Amen. And so we need encouragement in these days. Uh, I think about our church here. I think about our church here. Now, Brother Doug, Brother Doug's, Doug's well known, and he's a great preacher, a good friend. He loves preachers. And he loves this church. And, and we, and him, we talk a lot. And, and he loves this church. He loves preaching. He loves to help in churches. And he loves preachers. Uh, and my friend, and God has blessed him. I remember when we started here. I remember when Brother Doug first came. I was here. And my friend preached the first revival. And my friend Slicky Daddy was here. Uh, and my friend, we went through some hard times back yonder. Uh, and my friend, I look, man, what God has blessed and led Brother Doug to bring uh, through his leadership of Father the Lord and how the people that's come in. And Brother God's got, so got some good people here. Amen. In fact, I started, I, I wanted to preach this morning over and close out in the book of Romans when, uh, when Paul is writing and he's talking about all them different names. Uh, and he said, salute so-and-so and salute so-and-so. And what Paul was trying to say was, tell everybody. 
somebody I said hello amen now, I want to preach on this morning and just tell you God said hello this morning that, for your faithfulness and for this is a good giving church and, and a good fellowship in church but I tell you what we're still going through hard times I'll give you a little word of encouragement this morning if I can I told about first of all Paul when he was giving this encouragement look at verse number 3 Paul's in prison. He's thinking about the church at Philippi. He said, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. You know what? Paul was just, having, he thought about, he said, when I think about you, that word remembrance means mention. He said, when you're mentioned, when the church at Philippi is mentioned, just, the, just somebody says the church of Philippi or somebody says somebody uh, maybe a person's name in the church of Philippi. He said, I stop and thank God for the remembrance of you here at the church of Philippi. You know what? We'll just be able to thank God. Every time we think about Emmanuel Baptist Church, we'll just thank God we're a member of it. Amen. Amen. Every time we take here one of the person, people's name in the church, we'll just thank God that we're a member of that church. Every time we hear the pastor's name mentioned, we'll just thank God that we have a pastor that preaches the word. And my friend, we have people that loves God. He said, I just, he said, I thank God upon every mention. All I got to do is just thank of you. And I have a great, my friend, word. He said, send them courage. You know what? It's good sometimes just know people's thinking about you. Right. Amen. Amen. Come on now, help me out. Just think about it. I, I know in my mind, I don't get to come as often as I'd like to come and, uh, and hear. But you know what, in my mind, uh, you don't believe this. I, I know uh, old people are supposed to lose their mind, but I still got a little bit of mind. But, uh, you know, I, I can tell, uh, and, and I can be home at my house praying, and I picture all y'all. I know where you sit. You sit in the same place every time. Song leader always sits right there. I can see that in my mind. Amen. Y'all, this crowd over here always sits right over there. Y'all been sitting there for a hundred years. Amen. And I know where you sat. Uh, my friend, listen, different ones. Uh, and I, in my mind, and you'll usually you say, what does that mean? That means sometimes when I'm thinking about manual church, my mind goes back and I, speak, I begin to picture all y'all. And in my heart, I'm thanking God for people that's faithful to come and faithful to serve God and a place that you can come and worship God. Paul said, hey, you ought to be thankful one for another. You ought to be thankful for your pastor. You ought to be thankful for each other. You ought to be thankful for those that sit behind you, those that sit in front of you. My friend, those that you like and don't even like, you ought to be thankful for. Uh, come on now, help me out. Uh, sometimes, you know, there's people you don't really like them, but you thank God for them. You say, preacher, what do you mean? Had a pastor one time, may have told you, had a pastor one time, he took a church, and, and, and there's a guy, in, I think his name was John, I can't remember, but I, we just used John. He always sat right there. And but the pastor pastored that church for about 11 years, and everything that he was for, that guy was against. <laughs> and everything he was against, that guy was for. For 11 years, he fought with that guy over everything. He'd be wanting to put something through. That God had something to say. And my friend, if he didn't want to go through it, that God bring it up. And for 11 years, he put up with that guy. And finally, one Sunday, he got ready to, he was going to resign. And he got up and said, I'm resigning this morning. This will be my life service. The Lord has led me lay, And I'm going to be moving so and so into another work. And he said, Before I go, he said, I want to say one thing. I thank God for Brother John, my friend, being here for all these 11 years. I thank God for Brother John. And everybody's sitting there thinking, what in the world? He's against everything you want to do. He said, I thank God for him because it hadn't been for him. I wouldn't have had a prayer love. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes those that you know, they know it's kind of hard to deal with. It kind of helps your prayer life. Amen. And so you ought to, hey, Paul said, I thank God. You ought to thank, hey, you ought to thank God every Sunday. You get a place come to the house of God and worship God. Not only Paul, he encouraged him with thankfulness, but he said, he look at the next thing in verse 4, always in every prayer of mine for, all, for you all making requests with joy. Not only that, Paul encouraged him. He said, not only am I thinking about you, but he said, I'm praying for you. Uh, listen to what he said. He said, I it, it always, I'm always got you on my mind. And in my prayer life, I'm always praying, what, for all of you making requests with joy. You know what? He didn't just say, he didn't just pray for certain ones. <laughs> Come on, Dale, help me out. He didn't just pray for his clique. Right. See, we don't have cliques. Well, why do you fellowship with the same ones all the time? Right. 
Every time you have a fellowship, you sit with the same crowd. Right. Come on now, little click always run around. Won't you get somebody out of your click and go eat with you? Yeah. <laughs> come on now, help me out. Huh? No, don't think we ain't got our little groups, amen. Uh, come on. But Paul said, I'm praying for all of you. Amen. And I tell you what, it's encouraging. I don't know if it's about you. If I was a member of the Philippian church and Paul sent that letter and when they read it and they, Paul said, I'm praying for all of you. I thank God all of you means my name's in there somewhere. <laughs> and you know what? You ought to be, you, you ought to, if you want to encourage people, you ought to let people know you're praying for them. Most of our prayer requests, we say, pray for my son. And before you get out the door, you done forgot it. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. Some of you have to have a GPS to get to Walmart. You, ought to have, you say, well, what's wrong with that? You ought to write down people's name. Hey, you know what? You ought to have everybody in this church's name wrote down. And pray for them. <laughs> Come on now, help me out. That's encouraging to know somebody's praying for you. It's encouraging to know, my friend, that, that there's people in the church. We pray one for another. How long's it been? How long, I, I can prove this. How long's it been since you gave a prayer request on Sunday night and Wednesday night somebody come by and ask you how the prayer request was going? <laughs> Ain't that encouraging? Give a prayer request, boy. I'm going through a hard time. And on Wednesday, on Sunday night, and on Wednesday night, here comes somebody, Tad comes by, and he says, Brother Mike, I know you made a request Wednesday, Sunday night, and I've been praying about that. I just wonder, how's it going? And I said, so and so, and I'm, I'm going to keep praying for you. Yeah. Boy, that's encouraging to know. Uh, my friend, all week long, somebody's been praying for my request. Uh, somebody's been calling my name. Uh, I'll tell you what, you ought to get a list and pray for everybody. It's encouraging to know that somebody Somebody is praying for you. <laughs> Write them down and put everybody's name. Do like me. I can memorize you. I know where you are. Amen. Come on, huh? I told Brother Doug, I said, when you get new folks, let me know where they're at so I can get them in my head. Amen. <laughs> Do you know what? He said, I'm praying. Boy, it's an encouragement to know. Hey, I got, I got, I got a couple of widow ladies that, and I, I, we just lost one lady, widow lady and she passed one on the glory. But you know what? I have a couple of ladies, the widow ladies, they would, they would text me. And they say, preacher, I don't know where you're at this week, but I'm praying for you. Man, you talk about encouraging. <laughs> you can talk about encouragement. Boy, that was a blessing. I used to pass, when I was pastoring in Gilly, I'd leave, uh, go to a preacher revival, and, 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 and some of them would start. And they'd say, preacher, we'll be praying for you Monday night. They said, over here, preacher, we'll take Tuesday night. They said, over here, we'll preach Wednesday night. Uh, and we'll preach, uh, and, uh, and they'll all be praying for me. But those are special. I, I, had, a, I had a church, a uh, uh, treasure, and, and one of the finest treasures in the world. And she'd call me, and she'd say, preacher, what time is church starting? Uh, I said, 7 o'clock. Uh, she'll say, preacher, I'll be in my bedroom at 7 o'clock. Uh, said, you ought to be out by nine, aren't you? I said, yeah. She said, I'll be praying from seven to nine that, that God will bless you and use you. But I think there's been times that I'd be preaching and struggling. That my friend just kind of struggling, trying to get going. That, and all of a sudden, that, I could think about her. And I thought, man, she's on her knees praying for me. I'd hit second gear and I was going. That, going somebody was praying. Hey, it's encouragement to know that we're praying one for another. Hard to get mad at each other when you're praying for them. Come on now, help me out. <laughs> this is just a simple message. That's all I got. But anyway, he, he, he was thankful, and he prayed for him. He man prayed. He, he, he said, cease it to pray. He, did, he said, I've always, I'm always praying for him. He didn't have to wait till you went through a storm. <laughs> he didn't have to wait till the bottom fell out to start praying for you. He said, I'm praying for you all the time. Amen. Just all the time, I'm praying for you. Come on now. <laughs> I tell, Kay, I tell Kay all the time I love her. She tells you she loves me all the time. I write notes, and, and uh, I got a bunch of sticky stuff. I like that sticky stuff, them little sticky papers, you know. I just stick them everywhere. Uh, I left home the other day. I was gone, and I, and I wrote one sticky note, Tammy, and, and I put it on the microwave. And, uh, and I thought, well, I felt so good. I wrote a sticky note and put it on the, on the coffee pot because I know that's her first stop. I even put the cigar, uh, the silverware drawer out and put one on top of the silverware door. Had them everywhere. Put one on the washing machine. I had that one everywhere. You know, it wasn't long. Kay called me. She said, I found your note. I said, well, good. Uh, directly she called me. I found another note. Uh, and my friend listened. Uh, and the next thing you know, she said, I had six. She found five. Uh, and she said, I found all five of them. I said, oh, no, there's one more. Uh, and, uh, you know, and, she, uh, and when I got home, when I got home, you know what? When I got home, she hugged me real good. Give me a good kiss. Amen. You say, well, hey, that's worth a sticky note. Amen. 
Amen. Paul says here, I am thank God I'm praying for you and I'm fellowshipping with you. Amen. Took her two days to find the last one. Amen. You say, you're crazy, preacher. Oh, no. That's words of encouragement. To know you're thinking about him. She knows I'm thinking about her. Even though I'm not there, I'm thinking about her. And I'll tell you what, my friend Paul said, I'm thanking for you. I'm thankful for you. And I'm praying for you. But look in verse number five. Verse number uh, five, he says, and not only I'm thankful in verse three, and not only in verse four, I'm praying for you always. But in verse five, he said, for your fellowship in the gospel. Yeah. You know what? He said, I enjoy the fellowship with you. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy fellowship and we. He said, I'm just thankful for the fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now. You know what? He enjoyed just fellowship. You know what? I don't know about you, but I enjoy fellowship with God's people. Amen. Amen. Some people, my friend, they, their last ones come in the first and they leave. And gripe because nobody won't have nothing to do with them. You don't hang around long enough. Yeah. Amen. I like that crowd that hangs around a while. Amen. <laughs> come on now, help me out. Just hang around a while. The church of God will be out of the restaurant and you can get a quick seat. Amen. And some people always just fellowship with the same bunch. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Always fellowship. The same little bunch is always who you fellowship with. He said, I'm fellowship with all of you. Amen. Amen. I want to have fellowship with all of you. I want to do something with all of you. Amen. And, uh, and, and your daughter, what's her name? She come around, she come around today. Huh? Bella, Bella, I went out of my mind. Sorry, Bella, but mine went blank. I told you it wasn't perfect. But anyway, she come up her. I want to know if I had any word. I'm going to eat lunch today. And she wanted me to go to lunch with her. I thought, praise God, I'd just soon go to lunch with you, Bella, as anybody in the house. Amen? You know why? She come up and hug my neck and fellowship with me a little bit. You know, I like that fellowship one with another. Two little girls a while ago come by there. I said, y'all sisters? And they said, no. I started picking on them. You know what? I like that fellowship one with another. And I'll tell you what Paul said. Hey, when I'm down there at the church of Philip, I'm in prison right now. But when I get through, I'm coming back down there because I enjoy the fellowship. Man, it's good to shake hands and fellowship one with another. Used to, you know, used to the church fellowship more than it did now. Back in, when I first started pastoring, back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, somewhere in our I, my first church, I pastored in Greenville, Tennessee, and, and me and Kay hadn't been married long, and, and uh, I, I was booked up for preaching appointments, and I had a date book for preaching appointments. She had a date book for eating appointments. I'm serious. We eat every Sunday with somebody. They fought over who was going to eat with and sometimes if somebody couldn't get in, say, was going to Brother Brian's house, and my friend, some of them come and say, which Sunday, next Sunday, can you go eat with us? I say, no, we're going with Brother Brian's house. You know what they'd do? They'd call Brother Brian and say, if you don't care, we'll bring lunch and get together. My friend, and every Sunday, we went somewhere, and there'd be a whole house full of fellowship and one with another. <laughs> now we're afraid to have the preacher come for go and have to clean the house up, Amen. <laughs> get rid of a bunch of junk before the preacher come, amen. But you know what? We used to get together in fellowship. You know, some, some places, and I don't mean to be ugly, but you know what? You can have a church fellowship sometime, and there are some people who say, well, I ain't going. Yeah. Well, why not? You're part of the church. Uh, come on now. Amen. I ain't eating nobody's cooking. Well, bring your own. Right. Amen. Just eat your own bowl of stuff, amen. And bring your own little bowl of corn and eat it, Amen. Uh, listen, just there, there's no right. Don't have to eat. Just come fellowship. Right. I don't know about y'all. You fight the devil all week. You fight that world. She said she worked for a bunch of Catholics all the time. And I tell you what, I know uh, probably nice people, but probably in a comfortable situation sometimes either. I tell you what, ain't it good to get to the house of God? And my friend, fellowship with people believe like you believe. Love what you love. Get excited over what you get excited over. I tell you, you ought to be able to come to the house of God, if nothing else, just to come fellowship one with another. Come on, hell. Paul said, I enjoy the fellowship. I, let, I enjoy the fellowship with God's people. Amen. Amen. Brother Brian, I guess he won't mind telling he, he come to Gatlinburg a while back. We don't live far from Gatlinburg. This is a hint. We don't live far from Gatlinburg. And so when he came, he said he knew we didn't live far. He called and wants to come up there and eat supper with him. Now, I didn't turn him down, brother. We was in the car. I was in the car before he hung up. Amen. <laughs> no, just, just kidding. And we went up there and fellowship had a wonderful time. 
We sat at the house the other day, and I said, you know what, we're going up on Saturday. I closed the meeting on Thursday, uh, uh, last uh, Saturday, Friday night, and we got up early yesterday and headed this way. I said, I'm going to call Brother Pine and tell him he, if he wants to, he can meet us to eat so we can have some more of that good fellowship that we had up there in Pigeon Forge. We had a good time last night. They, they may not have, but me and Katie did, amen. But we had a good time of fellowship. You know what? Paul said, I enjoy the fellowship. And you know what? <laughs> if you want some encouragement, come and fellowship with God's people. Amen. Get together and fellowship. And then let me go on. I got to keep moving. Not only he said thankfulness, and he said prayer and fellowship. But look at verse number six. Being confident of this very thing, that we, he which hath begun a good work in you, well before him unto the day of Jesus Christ. He talks about, he said, I'm confident. I'm not only thankful for you. I'm not only praying for you. I don't only enjoy your fellowship. But he said, I have confidence that God is going to do a work in you. He started the work and he's going to keep on and finish that work that God has started for you. I don't know about you, you ought to come here with confidence that God's going to lead Brother Doug to do great things and God's going to accomplish things through him as he follows the, uh, follows the Holy Ghost. You know, and when somebody gets saved, I think you ought to be you ought to go to them and let them know that God, you've got confidence in them that they're going to grow and you're praying for them and my friend, put some confidence in their heart. I got a church I go to down here in the lower part of Kentucky, right? Right before you cross into Tennessee, there's a little old church sitting there, uh, uh, Saxton Baptist Church, and I preach a lot there for Brother Gray, and he's got several young preachers in his church, and he has a camp meeting, big camp meeting, and, and there'll probably be 40, 50 preachers there at the camp meeting, and, and, and he always wants me to come, and I go up, and he's got them young preachers in his church. And you know what? Them young preachers, they'll come in standing around. Well, them big-time preachers, they'll come in. You know what? They, they, they got their own little buddies, their fellowship and well. And I looked over and seen them little young preachers. The first time I ever went, and I went over and got right in the middle of them. And Brother Slick, I looked at him. I said, boys, how y'all doing? And they said, doing fine. I said, buddy, what are you studying on? What kind of, what are you doing? And he said, well, I've been studying out the book of Corinthians. I said, tell me about it. And he'd tell me what he was studying. And then I said, I got a good outline on that. I said, I'll bring it to you. And I brought it to him and gave it to him. I picked up some little books and I'd bring it up for them young preachers and I'd give it to them and I'd sit around and talk to them and fellowship with them and you know what my friend the pastor come around he said brother Mike you know why this church loves you and you know why them boys love you you take time to stop those old young preachers and try to encourage them said I watched the other night he said all them preachers just passed them up and said you always stop a little bit I'm not tooting my own horn I'm just telling you I always stop I remember I was a young preacher one time and I enjoyed and preached the people that helped me and I'll tell you what young Christians need encouragement. These young folks need encouragement. And you don't let them know God saved you. God's got something for your life. God's got you here in Emmanuel Baptist Church for a reason. <laughs> you say, Preacher, why don't you come up here and join Emmanuel Baptist Church? Number one, God told me to. Number two, Doug said I could. <laughs> and number three, I wanted to get in on what God was doing through this church. Amen. I'm going to tell you what, you ought, to, you ought to have some confidence in your church confidence in your pastor confidence in your friends confidence in those that sing confidence in your song leader confidence in your Sunday school teacher confidence in these young preachers that's around amen I get tired of these folks say well uh, just a young preacher I don't know I ain't even going uh, well you, you ought to be if any time you ought to be here you ought to be when they're preaching and give them some confidence and help them say amen and help them you say why because they're part of your church <laughs> Okay, let me go on. Not only that, he said, he said, I'm thankful for you. He said, I'm praying for you. I enjoy fellowshipping with you. I'm confident God's going to do a great work. But look at verse number 7. Verse number 7, he said, even as it meet for me to thank this of y'all, because I have you in my heart. Paul said, hey, if you don't know it, I have you, Church of Philippi, in my heart. <laughs> you know, you get something in your heart, you're pretty well going to do that. Amen. Come on. If you get if you get a certain place to eat on your mind, you may not get there today, but you'll get there soon. Right. Amen. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> we'll get there. And you know, if you get something in your heart, we pretty well do what kind of what's in our heart. Right. Amen. Paul said, I remember and I've told you this a thousand times, but I remember when 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 before I met Kay, uh, I was done preaching. I'd preached five years before I met Miss Kay and, and, and I wasn't gonna get married. I had no intention to give I didn't have nothing against women. I didn't have nothing against marriage. I was just going to be like Paul. I was just going to travel with Brother Josh and preach, and that's just what I was going to do. 
I was preaching all the time and trying to work a little bit and go preach. And, and I, just, that was just, I told my mother and daddy, I said, I'm just going to preach and, and travel and preach. And, uh, and then one day, one day, when I got back from Vietnam, uh, I, I was, uh, Jack's is a little restaurant we had in Newport. Didn't have nothing else to do. Everybody just rolled around around Jack's. It was a thrill of the, of the Friday night. If you was lucky, you could get a parking place like Sonic, you know, had a parking place. And, it, and everybody would ride around and wave at you. You'd wave at them. you make your circle. you come back and wave the same bunch. And then wave again. Just make 20 traps around there. Just wave. Now, that was a thrill, you know. Back in, we didn't have all this junk y'all got. And there, there was a girl I used to work with before I went to Vietnam. And named Cheryl, she hot. She seen me. She said, hey, when'd you get back? I said, it's been back, been back. I ain't even been back two weeks yet. She said, pull over here. And I pulled over her and was talking to her. I used to work with her. And Kay was sitting on the other side of the car. And I looked over and I said, who's that? Good looking girl you got on the other side. And Kay said, you know me. I said, no, I don't remember. She'd grown up. See, she was the chaperone of her cousin. I used to date her cousin. And she was the chaperone. And I hated her. And she hated me. But she grown up. I looked over her and I thought, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> It didn't take me long. I, said, I went around and got in a car on the other side and made her scoot over. And I was all three sitting in the front seat. I ended up taking her home at night. Now I've been with her 51 years. You know what happened? She got in here. <laughs> I don't care what my intentions was, but she got in here. And I, 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 I was over there to see her every day. We did, we, three months, we was married. Everybody said it won't work. Well, it's lasted 50-something years. That crowd said it won't work. Doesn't been divorced two or three times. Amen. But you know what? She got in here. She got in here so bad. My friend, I worked at, I was working swing shift. I'd get off at 11 o'clock. I was at her house at, at 11.30. And if I worked all night, I got off at 6-something. I was at her house by 7 o'clock. <laughs> Amen. I mean, I was, I, I was hooked. <laughs> you know what? She got in here. She told my buddy, said, we used to drag race all the time. And don't get out here drag racing like we used to do. But we used to do that. We'd tear, we'd tear transmissions out of 56 civil legs and stay up all night, put another one in, and be driving the next morning. And, and, and you know what? And then boys would say, hey, Mike, come on, we're going to be drag racing so-and-so. Bring your car. I said, I can't. I'm going to K's. They said, you went to K's last night. I said, yeah, I'm going tonight. And don't call tomorrow. I'm going tomorrow. <laughs> you know why she got in here? She never got out of here. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, when you got saved during this church, it ought to have been in your heart. If it's in your heart, you'll get up on Sunday morning, you'll make your way here. Amen? Come on now, help me out. Shoot, I like it so much, I lay my clothes out on Saturday night just so I can get a head start. I just like the church. I like being in the house. It's in my heart. Just the people is in my heart. The church is in my heart. The grounds is in my heart. When I was a pastor, when I was a pastor at Kelly, we didn't start till 10 o'clock. I'd be at church. We lived 45, miles, uh, 45 minutes away. I'd be at the church at 8 o'clock Sunday morning. My wife said, what are we doing here so early? I said, I want to stand on the porch and watch the saints come in. I'd be standing up there at old Mary Nell Hatch. I can see them pulling in now. I'd say, y'all come Mary Nell Hatch. They'd get out of the car and say, pray to God. Good to see you, Mary Nell. We're going to have a meeting today. Here come Calvin and Debbie. Oh, here come some more. And my friend, they'd come in. Here they start coming in, getting out of the car. I was excited just to watch the saints come in. You know why? The church was in my heart. We'd see the choir get up and sing. I'd sit there and rejoice. You know why? It's in my heart. I'd see them little kids come around. I always sit, I always sit right here on the front seat. Never did sit up here. I always sit right there and pastor from right there. And I'd sit there. And them little old kids would come around. And I'd get in on my knees and hug their necks. And my friend would love every minute. You know what? It's in my heart. I tell you what, the church gets in your heart. You like everybody here. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> it's, I don't care what's going on. You want to get in on it. Offering take. You want to get in on it. Amen. <laughs> I was in a meeting years ago down in Florida. Years ago down in Florida, and uh, they I don't know how many takes offerings they took in that in that church at camp meeting that week and it's taking offerings for everything I told that pastor I said next year I'm going to come I'm going to stop the bank and get me 50 ones and at least I can put a dollar in every offering I mean they just kept taking offerings kept taking offerings and every offering they'd take I'd, I'd give some money and they'd take another offering I'd try to give a little bit of money 
in that offering. And a young preacher sat down beside me. And, and, and we went to lunch. And he's sitting down beside me lunch. He said, Brother Goodson said, I, I noticed something. I said, what did you notice? He said, I noticed it didn't matter what offering it was. He always gave, put a little something in it. I said, you know why? I said, giving's in my heart. I said, half of others is in my heart. Right. And I seen him years later, probably 10 years later. And he told me, he said, you know what, preacher? I said, what? He said, ever since we left Florida at that meeting, he said, I ain't never missed an offering that I didn't put a little something in and ask God to put it in my heart. Right. You know what? Uh, he said, I've got you church into my heart. You know what? You ought to ask God. If you don't have this church in your heart, you ought to ask God to put it in your heart. Right. Amen. Then let me go on. Now look, at, look at verse number 7, the last part. He says in that verse, insomuch as my bonds and the defense of the confirmation of the gospel, you are all partakers of my grace. You know what he said? He looked around. You know, ain't no telling what kind of people is down there at Church of Philippi. Yeah. Might have been some, in modern terms, modern language, might have been some old ex-dope heads, ex-jailbirds, ex-motorcycle riders as crooked and mean as a snake. Now, that ain't all that way, but that's what this, you know, years ago, when you when you got when you see a motorcycle rider and he had one of them scarves on his head and dressed out in leather, you thought, man, he's gonna rob us sure as the world. I mean, that's just the way it was. You know, he said we're all. You know what he was saying is, I look down at Church of Philippi. When I look at you, I don't see you as old crooks and harlots and thieves and dope heads. I look at that we're all saved by the same grace of God. We're all partakers of the grace of God. We're all in this family together. The blood of Christ has washed us all. And thank God we're all saved. We're brothers and sisters of Christ. Now we're the sons of God. Let's not fear what we shall be. We're all the sons of God. Well, you know what? You ought to just rejoice that we have people to come. And we're all partakers of His grace. Some of you used to mean, used to mean as a junkyard dog. You ought to just be thankful they took you in. And the only reason they took you in is because of the grace of God. I got a meeting coming up in Alabama. First week of November, I'll be in Alabama. And the pastor, I went down there last year and preached in his little, little jubilee hat. And he wanted me to come back. He said, the preacher said, our folks loved you. He said, please come back. And I said, I'll be back. And he told me the other night, I preached with him last week in that, in that tent meeting. And he told me, he said, Brother Mike, what was that guy's name? You remember what that guy's name was? Some goofy name. But anyway, he, that, he had a nickname. And I was calling him Goofy, okay? It was something like that. I mean, it was. It's a crazy name. He said, I can't wait you to meet old Goofy down there. I'm thinking, well, who's that? He said, preacher said there's a man lived down below our church. Said he was wicked. Wicked. And said he was dope head and drank. And a wicked boy. And said he came up here to the church one night. And said he heard the gospel. And said he got saved. Said he ain't got nothing. Said he lived down there and only had no electricity in his house. He lived down there and ain't got a thing. He said he comes to church. He said he comes to church. He, he, he said he wears them, you know, them uh, uh, Jordan, you know, they wear them old, uh, not Jordan here, but Michael Jordan. Wears them old big britches, you know, shorts. Come on, help me out. And them sweatshirts. He said he comes to church. Got them old big shorts on and a pair of tennis shoes and a sweatshirt. He said that's all he got. He said we're trying to help him some. Said he come in and said the first Sunday after he got saved, he come in looking like that. And said, and I said, anybody got anything to say? He said, oh, Goofy jumped up and said, hey, I ain't one of us a week ago. And said, I thank you for letting me come by the church and be a part of the church. I'll tell you what, God said, such were some of you. We was all sinners. We was all wicked. We was all going to hell. But thank God now, God saved us, put us in Emmanuel Baptist Church, and we're all partakers of his grace. When God looks at us, he don't see us that way. <laughs> he don't look at me no different. He looks at you. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. <laughs> We're all going to the same heaven. Ain't going to be no section over here for the blacks and section over here for the whites. And ain't going to be no section over here for the mean ones and no section over here for the good ones. <laughs> We're all going to be a part of the body of Christ and live with Him, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. When we get to heaven, we won't even know what you was. <laughs> Amen. Somebody ought to run around this building about three times on that. Amen. Let me give you the last thing. I've got to quit. Encouraging words. He encouraged them because he is thankful. He encouraged them because uh, they, he was praying for them. He was encouraging because he fellowshiped with them. He enjoyed it. He was confident God was going to work in their life. And he was in their heart. And he was partakers. All of them partakers of his grace. But look in, I don't, I'm not going to read this. But from verse 12 down to verse 29, Paul's talking about he's in prison. And he said, don't worry about me. All this falls out for the forms of the gospel. 
He said, whether Christ is preached in the end for, for good or for bad, Christ is preached, people's believing, the brethren's been strengthened, and all that. And he goes on and says, for me to live, to die is gain. And he keeps on. You know what he said? He said, he said church, I'm thinking about you, and I also want to give you a word of encouragement. Just keep persevering. Just keep going on. In spite of everything and all the opposition you come through, just keep going on. Amen? And if I had a word of encouragement to you today, you know what it would be? Just keep going on. Amen? You may not be in a storm today, but you will be. You may be in a storm today, but you can be out soon. Amen? Things might not go in your way. Brother Doug may be a preacher, a preacher message that just rubs you wrong. Come back next week, he may preach you one that rubs you right. Amen? Come on now. <laughs> Come on, it ain't always. And sometimes we get mad over a message that ain't for us. <laughs> Come on. Uh, you just keep coming. You just keep coming. I remember, I remember years ago, years ago, I was just a kid, and I'd, I'd run around. Daddy was a preacher, and I'd go to meetings with him and stuff. We went down to preach the meeting for our brother Hicks. And, and for some reason or another, it was a hard meeting, and brother, uh, Daddy was a shooting straight, man. And, and I went, we looked at the motel, and Brother Hicks came over and stayed at the motel. The pastor came over to the motel and stayed all night with me, me and my dad. And I slept on a little cot down here, had two beds, and Daddy's in one, Brother Hicks in the other. And they talked for a while. Directly got quiet. I thought everybody was going to fall off to sleep. And I never forget old Brother Hicks. Old Brother Hicks, he was the pastor where Daddy was a preacher. He said, Brother Roy... He said, just keep shooting in the same hole. Said, they're letting on like they ain't in there. But just keep us shooting in the same hole. They'll come out there after a while. Right. And sometimes you just got to keep preaching and keep living and keep singing and keep pushing. And God will work after a while in their heart. You've just got to, you can't quit over every little thing. Ain't it amazing? Ain't it amazing? You can, somebody can do you wrong at Walmart and you go back next week. You can get a bad deal in the car lot and you'll go back and buy another one. Amen. Somebody do a little bit wrong with church. You won't change church. How come you don't never change grocery stores and all that stuff? Change doctors. Oh, he made me mad, but I've been going to him 20 years. <laughs> Just keep going back. Come to church. All somebody's got to do is not shake your hand. Yeah. Had a woman in my church when I was passing Chattanooga. She said, she got mad. I didn't know she was mad. She missed about four weeks. I thought, I didn't know what she was missed. So I went to Sarah one day. I said, hey, I'm going to see you. Been missing your church. Well, I got upset. And I said, well, well what's wrong? What, somebody do something to you? Yeah. Hateful woman. And she said, I said, well, what was it? Maybe we can fix it up. She said, the last time I come, you didn't even shake my hand. You think I'm kidding because of that song, but I, that's what she said. That Miss Kate, tell you the truth. She said, you didn't shake my hand that Sunday. I ain't coming back. I said, well, just to be honest with you, I said, uh, I've got about 50 members, and, I, and I, I'm sorry I couldn't get to everybody, but you ain't got one pastor, sure to God you could get to me and shook my hand. I said, just in fact, you didn't shake mine either. So get over it and get back to church. And she came back the next Sunday and never had no more problem with her. Uh, just because somebody don't shake your hand, go shake their hand. Go over and say, you didn't shake my hand. Go over and say, I'm sorry. I didn't get to you and get to shake your hand this week. Uh, <laughs> come on now. Let me, let me, let me close. I've got to shut up. Acts chapter number 2. Listen to what the first church is. Listen, I told you all about this fellowship, prayer, thankfulness, and all that. The first church, listen to it. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking bread, and in prayers, fear came upon every soul. Many wonders and signs were done. All believed were together. All had things common. All sold their possessions and goods, parted them to all men have need. They continued daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, and eating meat and gladness and single heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily so it should be saved. Sounds like what Paul wrote to them. <laughs> that church in the book of Acts sounded like, sound like what Paul was writing to the Philippian church. And guess what happened? People started getting saved. Multitudes. I tell you what, you get a church that's thankful. You get a bunch of people that's thankful to each other. And you get a bunch of people that's praying one for another, fellowship one another, confident one another, in their heart, encouraging each other. You know what? The Holy Ghost is going to have freedom to move. We're going to see a bunch of sinners saved around here. Right. Amen? I'm talking about loving your church. I mean, in, state of, in the midst of prison, he wrote encouraging words. I don't know about you. I, I don't know why, how I act. Somebody put me in jail. <laughs> I'd probably be mad. 
I ain't never been in jail one time in my life. My daughter, my sister-in-law put me in jail. One time. And my, they was getting divorced, and my brother called and said, go get our stuff, the rent's up. Go get it. And I preached, on the, I preached at the jail on Sunday. And they picked me up and put me in jail on Monday. <laughs> and, see, and, and, and the, the, the sheriff came in. He looked at me, and I'm standing there. He said, what are you doing here, preacher? I said, well, I preached down here yesterday. He said, I know that. We don't have preaching on Monday. I said, no, I'm a jailbird today. <laughs> he said, get him out of here. I told him what happened. My sister-in-law, my brother, that's getting divorced, and, and, and had to get their stuff out. But I'll pay another month's rent, and I went over and got it and took it and stole it somewhere. She thought I stole it. <laughs> Put me in jail. Amen. Go to about and preach good and put in jail. I don't care. I tell you what, I wasn't writing those nice letters to churches when I was standing down there either. <laughs> I was madder than far. Amen? And don't think you wouldn't. You ain't got no halo around your head. Come up here and say, where's Brother Brian? He's in, he's in jail, preacher. I go over and visit him. What are you doing? I'm sorry. He ain't going to be saying, well, I love the church. You know what? Uh. <laughs> Why ain't Brother Blood got me out of here? Huh? We just don't have that nature. But you know what? We ought to pray God give us the same nature Paul had. In the midst of the hardship, the hardest place he could be, he wrote a letter encouraging. Let us be encouraged as one another. Amen. I'm through, God. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.